make friends who are plumbers, electricians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't know how to do it, reach out. You might be wondering why the bathroom is in the back of the bus because most buses put their bedroom in the back of the bus. I think I saw a bus conversion when I was like 15 and thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> My name is Time. And I'm Andy, and this is the Sun Chaser Schoolie. 35 feet long with a 19 inch roof raise. And we'll show you guys around. So welcome into the kitchen. This is one of my favorite spaces that we designed. So first off, we've got a full-size fridge, the matching gallons fridge with the microwave. And we actually went with a propane stove and oven. This is one of the two things that uses propane in the bus, but we chose this over an induction burner or like a Coleman propane or something like that because we wanted, we cook a lot of meals in here and I love to cook. I love to have all the heat, decent size oven. So yeah, that's why we chose that one. So then for extra cooking space, if I need to multitask and I got something cooking here, I need something else. We do have our little handy induction burner that we keep underneath. And we have our beast blender. This thing works wonders. Love this thing. And then one of my favorite things is our coffee machine. I keep this on the counter all the time because this is like my pride and joy. And then under here is our washer and dryer combo. We also have our upper cabinet that is not finished. So if you guys have any recommendations, please drop them in the comments to how to paint this or finish it because it's not. A little bit of everything in there. We got our dry storage, our glasses and cereal and oils and stuff in there. So that's one of our big storage areas. We have our deep storage sink, all of our cabinets. Under here, we keep most of our pots and pans and our air fryer. We have some produce storage over here. And then one of our sources of heat in the bus is our diesel heater. We kind of put it right underneath our dry storage. Works great. And then we have our table that pops out right under here. This is kind of the entryway desk space. This right here, our little captain's chair. Something that's unique about this is it actually folds up. So if we take this, we can pop it down and then the whole thing just kind of packs away. And that allows a lot more room in here. I don't know if you have more guests in or whatever. So that's pretty nice. As you can see here, we don't have a couch or really anywhere to sit. We're still get on the look for, for a couch that goes here. One day we'll find it, one day we'll find the perfect one. But this little thing that you might see in the ground here, wondering what that is, that's actually just a little fan, but it works really nicely for the hot days. You plug that thing in, it's a floor fan, so it just keeps circulation going. Moving over here, this is also where I spend a bunch of my time. This is editing desk. We have a weekly vlog that we do on our YouTube channel, and then we also run our media company out of here. So we create videos for clients, a lot of movie making happens here. We have our Starlink router here on the desk as well. Above my head here is our Pioneer mini split. This is a 9,000 BTU. This is great for heating and cooling. Um, does a little bit of both. And then right back there, is just some more overhead storage for whatever else we wanna throw up there. So we're both from upstate New York, Saratoga, Albany area. And I guess the reason we got into bus life is I think I saw a bus conversion when I was like 15 and thought that was the coolest thing ever. I knew I wanted a space, but then I think I was like 18 or 19 at the time. And I was like, I'm not gonna buy a house in, in yeah. New York. And we didn't even know if we wanted to necessarily stay in New York. So I was like, all right, how can we have a space of our own, but then maybe also like be able to travel, get outside of New York, explore a little bit more. I'm like, huh, what if we took a house and just put it on wheels? And I loved interior design. So, and he was like, hey, what do you think about like doing a house with, you know, like on a bus? And I was like, Dude, I'm totally up for that challenge. I want to like, I want to do the whole thing. I want to decorate the inside. And so, yeah. One of the things that was really important to us though, was the, the roof raise. We knew we wanted that. Yeah. So we were able to find a bus that already had one. I think the bus itself, we spent about, I think it was 5,000 on the bus. And then I think we put about 20,000 in, in conversions into it. So I actually don't even have that rough number, but I think it's right, a little bit right under 30, yeah. 30,000. So welcome into the bedroom, another one of my favorite spaces. We kind of went with a bunk style. We wanted this to be a really cozy, but yet bigger area just for lounging and stuff like that. So we're gonna start at the top. We have a queen size mattress. We also have a mantle for books and whatnot. We keep our portable batteries and our laptops on the side there. There's a little bit of extra storage there. We do have our skylight. And one of the things that we just put in was our wooden ladder, which I love because in the mornings you can just get up, go out on the roof, enjoy your matcha, enjoy your coffee before you start your day. And then underneath we have all of our clothing drawers. These are huge. So tons of room under there. 
And then under this side, we have our hanging storage. So for dresses and for dress shirts, everything like that. And then deep storage in the back. And then we also have our EcoFlow Wave 2 air conditioner that can tap right into our dryer vent. So it works both ways. So welcome to the bathroom, the back of the bus. You might be wondering why the bathroom is in the back of the bus because most buses put their bedroom in the back of the bus, but we have a lot of windows back here and natural light was very important, especially when getting ready because gotta have the light. We also have an outlet on the side here. There's a total of eight outlets in the whole bus. So wherever we need to plug in our phones or use our styling tools or anything like that, we have access to all of that. We have our 18 liter hot water tank on the side, our towel racks. We did a full size shower and this is actually a brushed concrete. We did days on this. We've uh, got it. It's a fiberglass concrete. So we plastered that all, sanded it down. And then on the bottom, we have a wood planking um, deck shower floor. So we have the Domatic 300. It is a black water tank toilet, um, not a compost toilet. We kind of chose that because it's just kind of mess free. I know a lot of people use the compost toilets, but we weren't really sure on, do we really want to commit to that? So we went with the black water tank, just easy flushes, keeps it nice and clean. So our black water tank is a 40 gallon tank. So it's pretty big and it kind of keeps keeps the hassle from doing the compost toilet. We only have to empty it like once every two weeks. Um, so hassle free, I'm not really the one that empties it. So uh, I didn't really want a compost toilet, but we have the black water tank and it works great. So I would say with going into bus life, definitely be flexible. Know that things are gonna break, that when you travel, your water pump might stop working halfway through your trip and your table might fall or something might break, but know that it's your bus, it's your project, you can fix it, you can change it. Um, and it gives you the ability to do that, that if you do the whole interior design and you don't like the way it turned out, you can change it and uh, it's your project. So it's in your hands. Make friends who are plumbers, electricians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't know how to do it, reach out. Luckily, we had a, a smaller team that kind of helped us with those little things, but uh, make friends. I think even the pros for us is, you know, being able to uh, definitely save some money, the money that we make. We don't have to pay rent anywhere. People ask, well, then, you know, gas is so expensive nowadays. And that can kind of weigh out depending on how much traveling you're doing. You know, you can almost pay the equivalent in gas to rent, um, but still, with the opportunities that it brings, I think that leveled out so much more. There's more, more pros than cons, so I'll say that. All right, so I'll show you around some of the utilities that we have on the outside here. First box right here, this is actually just our starter batteries for the bus. So we keep a couple of little, you know, spare bungee cords and little things in there. But then right behind it is also more batteries. This we call our power box. This is the, the box that powers everything. So in here we have a 200 amp hour solar battery, 3000 watt inverter in the back there. One day we want to build this setup more. We actually have one solar panel up there right now. And then this thing on a sunny day, it'll last you about the whole day, you know, running the basics off of it. But if you're trying to do anything heavy loading, like you can't run the AC or the, you know, washer and dryer off that, that'll drain it immediately. So, but we also have these right here, which are actual portable power stations. So these things are great because we can bring these around. So if we're, you know, running low on solar, we can even just bring these right inside. So these are pretty handy to have. Right now we actually have the whole bus plugged into the Power Republic that still has 6.4 hours left to it. So we got plenty of charge there. So next up behind our power box is our propane tanks. Uh, we have two 20 gallon propane tanks. Those are really easy because you can swap them out really at any gas station, any grocery store. Most places have a have a swap like that. And then right next to that is the outside unit of the Pioneer Mini Split right over here. Uh, this is also our another power situation that when we don't have electric, we don't have batteries. This is our 5000 watt generator and this thing we can plug in power on at any point and it keeps everything running. This is enough to power a whole house. So for the bus, it's, it's plenty over here on the other side of me. This is our fresh water tank. That's about a 50 gallon fresh water tank. In the middle of the bus is our black water tank. And then over there on the other side, right under the shower is the gray water tank. The gray water is actually our smallest tank. Um, it's a little bit smaller than our fresh water tank, which is unfortunate because then every time we run through that, we know that the gray water is already full. So maybe one day we'll get around to swapping that, but right now it, it works fine. Then right above our fresh water, this is just our hose hookup, right to fill the fresh water tank. If we're using the water I'd say on like a normal basis for, you know, normal shower, maybe doing the dishes. It lasts us about three days. If we do like a load of laundry, we'll go through that much quicker. If we're being conservative with it, we can last, you know, a good week or something like that. But I like taking a shower every day. So we usually have to fill it up about every three to four days. 
right over here, this is our door. I think over the summer I had to cut off just the bus doors because we loved the look of the bus doors because it made it feel, you know, like a bus and they're cool, but all of the rubber was just like falling off and the insulation was horrible. It was practically not even a door. So we knew we either had to repair that or get a new door. We're like, let's get a new door for, for safety too. So um, this thing's nice because half of the door here actually slides down. So then we want to get some air circulation in there or just get some fresh air. That's also nice. And for us, this is uh, this is our expense, but it's also the way we make money too. When we uh, first started the bus, everyone's always asking, "Hey, how's the bus going? How's you know what's it look like now?" So we made the TikTok and Instagram just for people to check it out. And then, like in the first month of our TikTok, it got like ten thousand followers right off the bat. I'm like, huh, maybe actually people might be uh, might be interested in seeing this. So we uh, kind of put some more time into creating that 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 brand, and uh, the name Sun Chaser was born. And we also started doing YouTube too. So we do a weekly vlog on YouTube, which keeps people entertained and keeps people filled in on what the Sun Chasers are up to. And uh, yeah. And then also with it, Sun Chaser Media is our handle on all of our social media platforms. And uh, that's kind of the media company that we run. So we also work with clients, um, whether you're a business or a brand that wants to freshen up your look, design, whatever that might be, we, uh, we do it all. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with the Sun Chasers today and uh, we're out.